In this video, I'll be going through on the link between Macaulay duration and modified duration. Okay, so these are two measures that are used for fixed income or for bonds. And we're going to see how these two are related. So let's uh, first define uh, the price for a bond or the present value of a bond. So these are denoted as P. So the price of a bond would depend on the present value of its cash flows, which consists of coupons and also the face value of the bond. So for this case, I'm going to make a very simple assumption. Uh, it's just an annual paying bond. So it only pays coupon once a year for a finite number of years. So in this case, we will have the coupons. Okay, so I'll denote it as C. So we'll have the coupons and then the coupons will be discounted. Okay, using the yield to maturity, I'll denote it as Y. Okay, so we have power one and then the coupon in year two, we'll discount it based on uh, power of two. And then we'll continue to do this until the last coupon, which is in period N. And then we'll do the same thing for the face value then we're done. Now, of course, uh, for the uh, coupon terms, we can summarize it in a summation form. So I can write this as sigma, okay, or the sum of the coupons, okay, discounted by the yield to maturity for period T. So T will be from 1 until N. And then, of course, we have the face value discounted at uh, the yield to maturity to power of N, which is the maturity of the bond. So again, I'm doing this as an annual paid bond, uh, but this can of course be tailored to bonds that pay uh, semi-annually or quarterly or monthly. Right, now, uh, before that, before I, uh, before I sh uh, derive or apply calculus, I'll first like to go through what is Macaulay duration. So Macaulay duration is a weighted average of the time Okay, are uh, based on the weightage where we will use the PV of the cash flows. So uh, Macaulay duration will be the sum of the PV of the cash flows. Okay, we'll take the time for each cash flow, then we'll multiply it to the coupon, and then we'll discount it again uh, using Y to power of T. Okay, and T will be from 1 to N. And then uh, we'll do the same for the uh, face value, which, but the face value, the timing is at period n times the face value divided by 1 plus y to the power of n. And then uh, the whole thing will be divided by the price okay, or the, of the bond. So that's Macaulay duration. Now, let's begin. So continuing from the price formula, we'll now apply, the, uh, we'll apply differentiation. So what I'll do is I'm going to find out what is the first derivative of the price, okay, with respect to the yield to maturity. Now, of course, uh, before I can do that, okay, we will first express this uh, power, okay, for y. So I'll write this in this form. So we have sigma n t equals to 1, and then this is c, and then this is so 1 plus y to the power of negative t, plus the face value multiplied by 1 plus y to the power of negative n, if I express it. Okay, in a negative power or negative uh, index. So in this case, if I were to apply differentiation, then what we'll get is for this part, we will have sigma and t equals to 1. We'll have negative c times t. And then we have 1 plus y. And then we'll have negative t minus 1. And then for the second term, we'll have the face value times negative n multi uh, multiplied by 1 plus y, the power of negative n minus 1. So then becomes, so we can now take out the negative term. So that becomes negative. And then we have uh, C times T, the time period. And then uh, divide by 1 plus Y to the power of T plus 1. And then for the second term, we have the face value times N. Okay, divide by 1 plus Y to the power of N plus 1. So in this case, uh, we then have a plus one on in the power, okay, for each denominator. So I'm going to factorize uh, one over one plus y. So that becomes uh, negative one over one plus y. So I'll take it out from both of this. So that will now leave us with 
I'll just write it's the time times coupon. Okay, the order doesn't matter. But then this one plus y to the power of t. Okay, and uh, for the second term, this will be uh, the period n, which is the maturity times the face value, divided by one plus y to the power of n. Right, so you're now beginning to see that in this term, okay, it relates partly to the definition of Macaulay duration, which is the part we refer to here in the numerator, okay? So, of course, what we don't have here is uh, the divide by P, okay, the denominator. So, up to this part, let's just rewrite this as dP over dy. Now, in this case, uh, what we'll then do is we now know that this is somewhat similar to Macaulay duration, okay? But, uh, of course, this term, okay, is only for the numerator. So, in other words, uh, if I want to get, if I want to express this in terms of Macaulay duration, so the sigma n, okay, t from t equals to 1 to n for t times c over 1 plus y to the power of t plus n times fv over 1 plus y to the power of n. If I multiply this over, this will be the Macaulay duration times price. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for this particular bracket. So that would give us negative 1 over 1 plus y and that will be multiplied by the Macaulay duration times price. Right, so let's finish it up. So I'm going to then move the negative and the price over to the left hand side. So that becomes negative 1 over P multiplied by DP over DY. So that's uh, Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus Y. Okay, and this definition is what we call the modified duration. So that's why we will have to divide Macaulay duration by 1 plus y, the yield to maturity, in order to get the modified duration, okay, where it's equals to negative 1 over p times the first derivative of price with respect to yield to maturity. Right, so hopefully that gives you an idea or at least helps you to understand why we divide Macaulay duration by 1 plus y. Okay, uh, in order to get the modified duration.